Hello everyone, and welcome to your third core animation tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can override the default animations that NSView already implements for us. So we'll be able to add our own custom animations and see those in action. All right, so with that being said, let's uh, look at what we have for lesson three. Lesson three is basically the exact same code that we had in lesson one. So if you haven't watched lesson one or lesson two, make sure you watch those, but lesson three is using all the code that was in lesson one. So we have our move view that we had in lesson one. Again, watch that if you haven't. The uh, I have made a few tweaks though. I got rid of the bool. Uh, that determines whether we're at the start or end frame. So in this tutorial, we're just going to the end frame. You could really leave, uh, if you want, you can leave all the stuff that you have in uh, from the other tutorial, but it's going to be uh, a little bit different. Anyway, nonetheless, I got rid of the bool for this uh, move view in this tutorial, so now we're just going to the end frame, and uh, that's that. All right, so with that being said, uh, I also changed the key down to be mouse down. If you're curious on how you can get mouse clicks, that's how you can detect when you click the mouse. So mouse down will be call whenever I click and I will change my frame to be the end frame. So if I click, you can see that now my bike goes to the end and nothing else will happen. All right, so that's the simplified code for this tutorial and uh, that's that. All right, now as you notice though, when we run this tutorial, we just get this very basic animation that's always the same thing, right? It's always 0 0.25 seconds. That's just the default time value. That's how long it's going to take to go from its original position to the end position. And that's it, right? Nothing else. It's always going to be what happens. What if we want to change that? Well, we talked a little bit about this in lesson two on where uh, we might be able to do this. And uh, we'll go back to that graphic just briefly for this. And like I was saying, the animator basically checks two locations, right? It goes to the animation for key section. If it finds a key for that particular animation or particular thing it's trying to animate, so frame origin or frame size, for example, it'll check, hey, is there a key for frame origin? If there is, it'll return the animation object in our animation dictionary for that key. If nothing's there, then it returns nil. And we go down to number two here, which is the default animation. So that's essentially what always happens. We always go to number two. In this tutorial, we're gonna do number one. So that just sounded wrong, but anyway, we'll, we'll leave it at that. All right, uh, good stuff. Let's go to how we can implement this. So let's go and set our animations on our image view. By calling set animations, we're changing that animations dictionary that I've been talking about. The animation dictionary, we want to specify what's going to be activated for particular keys. So in the last tutorial, I kind of said, well, when we're using set frame, we're using the frame key. Now this is kind of right in the, you know, if you were to talk about key value coding, but really what happens when we call set frame, it's kind of a special example really, but when we call set frame, we're really calling set frame origin and set frame size. So those two things are kind of being set. There really is no frame. Frame is just kind of um, an implicit uh, property that's derived from those two things. So if you know the frame origin and the frame size, right, you can figure out what the frame is. But uh, the frame origin and the frame size are the two keys that will be set or changed, uh, or that those are the two things that are going to be looking for animations. There is no frame animation. There is a frame origin and a frame size that we can set. So just to recap those, the frame origin is the bottom left corner. If we move the bottom left corner of our frame, right, we're just translating where our frame is along, or moving it along our, you know, wherever. We're just moving the frame. If I change the frame size, the frame's not necessarily moving to a new location, but it, the height and the width are changing while the bottom left corner is pinned to its uh, current spot. All right, so to, uh, anyway, let's try to make a custom animation for whenever we change the origin. Now, this will still be called if we call set frame. Set frame, like I was saying, we'll call set frame origin and set frame uh, size uh, nonetheless. So let's make an animation for when we are changing the frame origin. 
we'll make our own little method for this. We'll call self, uh, we'll call this frame, or call it or origin animation. And we'll make a method for this. So the method will return a CA basic animation object. And what is contained, or we want the method name, of course, origin animation. And as we can see, though, this is complaining that it doesn't know what CA basic animation is. And this is because we haven't told it what it is. So right now, all that MoveView knows about is the, Co the Coco framework. But Coco doesn't actually know anything about uh, you know any core animation objects. So all the core animation objects are found in Quartz Core. Quartz Core is uh, the thing that holds on to a lot of the animation objects. So we have to link this framework, and to do that, we can go to our uh, lot. Our, what am I trying to say? Our project section here, and we go to our target, and we can add a new linked framework or link a framework here. And we want to link Quartz Core. You'll also see that there's a Quartz framework. Quartz is a little larger, contains some other things. Quartz Core is uh, uh, actually part of Quartz, but uh, it's one of the smaller components. But what Quartz Core adds for us is the core animation stuff. So if we look into the Quartz Core framework, if we go into our header files of that, you'll see that CA animation is actually uh, sitting inside of the Quartz Core framework. And you'll actually see that CA basic animation is within this header file. So that's where Quartz Core basically, you don't really have to know anything about this stuff, but uh, Quartz Core is the framework that we need to link to uh, if we want to include our core animation, animation objects. All right, so the last step is to import our Quartz Core stuff. So we import Quartz Core slash Quartz Core.h. That is the header file name for Quartz Core, and that imports all that good stuff. So now you can see that CA basic animation is there. All right, so it now knows that uh, it is a real object. So let's go ahead and make a CA basic animation object. So we'll call this uh, origin animation, and we create a CA basic animation animation. That's the method we can use to make a new object like this. So what does uh, what do animation objects really have? Well, CA animation brings some very basic stuff to it, but um, it or the CA animation animation ob CA animation object I should be saying is the object that uh, brings you know changing the duration of animations. There's a few other things in there, but what CA basic animation provides, which is a subclass of CA animation, it allows us to set a from value and a to value. So the from value essentially is the spot that you're starting from, and the to value is the thing you want to go to. Per, I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. So let's say this animation that we're making, this is the animation that occurs when we move our frame, or our frame origin. So what we want is for this to take a duration, let's say four seconds. And I'm just going to throw the F in here for now. I might talk about that in another tutorial. But basically what this means is that uh, if you put an F after a decimal number, it represents a float value. If you didn't have it, uh, like all these values up here, you're leaving them as double values, uh, which just means it's a little larger uh, number. But uh, there's kind of some specific places where you care to use it more than others. Really, it doesn't matter uh, too much at all. So if you aren't comfortable with using the F, I really wouldn't bother. But uh, I've fallen into the habit of using the F the odd time. So um, like I said, it only means that if you put the F at the end, it's a float. And if you leave it out, it's a double. In the end, it really won't make uh, much of a difference. All right, nonetheless, let's keep going with this uh, instead of dwelling on and nitpicky stuff. So origin animation, like I said, we want to be able to set uh, some from and to values. So actually, let me th just delete that for a second and talk about what we're trying to animate here. So what our from value should be is where we're starting from. And if we're talking about the origin, we're talking about the start frames origin, right? That's where we start with our image view. Our end or our to value is going to be where we end, and that's the end frames origin. The, those are the two, you know, those are the values we're animating from and to with the origin animation. 
So to get these, we could say NS point start point, and we're going to get these start frames origin. And we'll make another point, and this is going to be the end point. And end frame dot origin will be the origin of that. All right, so these are two structs. These are C structs, right? NS point is a C struct. It's not an Objective C object, and it just holds the origin or the x and y value of the origin. All right, now this is important because when I go to set my from value, you'll notice that it takes a type ID, and type ID means any Objective C object. And really, what it's uh, asking for in this case is um, the start and end points. Now the problem with this is that in our case uh, we only have uh, an NS or we have a struct, right? Our start point is a struct. It's not an Objective C object, so uh, it, we can't pass this in. So how can we fix this? Well, there's a very useful class in the Foundation Framework, which is known as NS Value. Although I don't think I've talked about this in uh, the Objective C series. Uh, it's a fairly simple idea. It's just an Objective C object. NS value just takes any, or not any, but a lot of uh, C objects, pro probably pretty much anything. But it takes a bunch of C objects, or C, um, C types, I guess I should say, and it just wraps them into an NS value Objective C object. So we can create a new NS value object by saying value with, and if we want to make a point, then we can say value with point, and it wraps this ns point into an ns value objective c object, right? ns point to c struct, so ns value just holds on to the c struct for us. All right, very nice. So now we can do the same thing for setting the to value. The to value, we just wrap it in an ns value, value with point, end point, like that. All right, now. Uh, now that we've kind of explained how that works, if you want to even simplify your code just a little bit more, uh, I think it makes it a little nicer, I guess, is you could uh, just delete that and you could say uh, like start frame. So you could say start frame dot origin and and frame dot origin like so. All right, so it's the same thing. We're just putting those into NS value objects. All right, those are now our from and to values. That's what our animation is going to animate from and to. And now we can just do the last thing, which is return this animation. That's all you need to do to specify uh, an animation uh, that you want to make for something. So, like I said before, we have our key here, which is the thing that's going to animate when we call set frame. Set frame is going to call set frame origin and set frame size. So it's going to look for the key frame origin when we go to set the frame origin. And then we're going to get the animation for that thing. So that's whatever we made in this method here. And uh, as we can see, it's basically just, um, well, it's basically just whatever we made. So it takes four seconds to complete, and it goes from the start frame origin to the end frame origin. That's that. So if we go ahead and run this, let's see what happens. So if I click, you can see that we had this very quick grow right of the frame size, which is because we haven't specified any animation for the frame size yet. It's still performing the default animation, and so it just kind of does, you know, whatever that animation does, which is the 0.25 seconds, and it does that animation. So that's not really what we want to have happen, though. We'd like it to actually do something else. So. How could we change that? Well, we could add it to the NS dictionary as, or the, you know, our frame or our animations dictionary as well. So we can make a key for frame size, and we'll make a new method for this. We'll call it uh, the size animation. Oops. Doot. Doot. All right. And make sure everything's right there. So tab that over. Make it look good. All right. Now we just have to implement this method. So it's going to do basically the same thing. And size animation. And so we're just going to create a CA basic animation. We'll call it size animation. And it's going to get a CA basic animation animation. 
we're going to set the duration to be, I don't know, let's make it something different. So we'll say set duration of uh, 2.5 maybe. And let's change what our endpoint or from and two values are. So we'll say set from value. Of course, we have to wrap these in NS value. And uh, you don't always use NS value though. That's an important thing to note. So maybe sometimes you'd use like an NS number or something. But uh, in this case, if we're adjusting the points and the sizes, we have to use NS value to wrap those. So uh, value with size is the thing we're looking for. And we want to get the start frame size. And we will also want to set the two value using NS value value with size and frame size. Ta-da! And now we'll return that size animation. Okay, so that should be pretty self-explanatory. We have an animation for our frame origin. We have an animation for our frame size. If I go ahead and run this, right click, we can see that the frame kind of grows and right there it stopped and then uh, it kept going with the origin animation. I'll just run that one more time so you can see. As you can see, we're adjusting both the frame and the origin, or the size, but then the size stops and the origin keeps going. All right, so that's basically what we had, right? We changed, we, our durations were different for both animations, so both animations took a little different. If we wanted to make uh, even more complicated things, we can change the timing function of an animation. So there's another uh, class called CA Media Timing Function and I'll just call it timing. Gets CA media timing function. And the method you could use for this is, uh, I'm not gonna go into all the details with this class, but just to show you some different things that you can do maybe, you can use the method function with name. And, oh God, I try to remember, I think it's K, yeah, KCA media. Okay, so if you do KCA media, these are a bunch of string constants for some kind of function with name, right? It's asking for some kind of name for a timing function. So a timing function essentially uh, adjusts the times at which the frames occur. So uh, let's just do a very, you know, by default, it's uh, this thing right here. And it kind of expresses how all these things change, but uh, that's, we'll talk about that later. Um, what we really want to do though is kind of something else. So let's do uh, maybe an ease, make an ease out. So an ease out animation. This means that essentially the uh, animation will be pretty fast in the beginning and then it will kind of slow down at the end, but it should still take the four seconds. So uh, we'll set this on our origin animation, set timing function, and we'll add the timing object to that. And now if we observe this, we should be able to see that it's, it's pretty fast at the beginning and then right at the end it kind of slows down, right? So if we watch that again, we have it fairly fast at the beginning, but then as it gets closer to the end it slows down the animation and that is an ease out animation. So uh, I'll talk more about the timing functions uh, later on, but the general idea is that you there are different timing functions that can kind of control how uh, fast animations occur over the entire span of the animation. So if you want it to obviously ease out, that means that you're slowly, uh, you're basically doing a lot of the movement in the beginning, and then at, when you're getting closer to the end of the time, then you're going to you know not move the animation as much. So those are different things to consider. Again, I'll talk about timing functions uh, more in detail for uh, other tutorials, but this is just an idea of what you can do with CA basic animation. And in the next tutorial, we'll dive into uh, other things you can do with other animation objects as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I hope you got something out of it. Of course, you can try different, uh, different things that you can animate as well, but uh, I'll be, uh, you know, I'll just warn you that there are a fairly limited number of things that you can animate with NS views um, because this is just sort of cocoa animation. So nonetheless, play around with, uh, you know, what we learned in uh, this tutorial 
and I will see you in lesson four. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Please subscribe to the channel. Like I already said, see you next time.